I'm Dr. David Junkin with uh, CV Orthopedics, Orthopedic Sports Medicine Specialist. Commonly, corticosteroid injections are necessary for treating certain ailments. Many occasions, patients have numerous questions. First of all, what is cortisone? Cortisone is an injectable steroid. Its function is to reduce inflammation. It's a potent anti-inflammatory. Whether we're treating arthritis, bursitis, or tendonitis, it is very effective in treating this localized pain. It delivers the medication directly to the source, and within a matter of a few days, on most occasions, it can eradicate the, the symptoms and improve your condition. In this video, I'm going to discuss frequently asked questions regarding corticosteroid injection treatment. I will demonstrate how a corticosteroid injection is delivered. Very common question, how is it done? The knee, for example, is one of the more common joints that we inject. Arthritis is the most common reason for this injection. This is a standard knee. This is the outside or what we refer to as the lateral aspect, while over here is the medial aspect. Majority of the time, individuals have pain along the medial side. Now there's different ways to come about the, the knee depending on the individual's position. Most commonly, we have the individual sitting with their leg over the side of the bed so that their knee is in a bent position. In such position, we typically come from the lateral or outside portion. We feel where the kneecap is or the patella, and we just follow the, the inferior border to a soft spot. This is the spot where commonly the first arthroscopic portal is made. In this location, we typically uh, mark the skin, prep the skin with alcohol or any other antiseptic, uh, and then inject the medication in such a fashion to aim for the middle portion of the knee. Inside the middle of the knee here are the cruciate ligaments, but this is a safe spot where there's no uh, cartilage. We don't want to hit that on the way in, and there's plenty of room directly behind the kneecap for us to deliver the medication. Many times people are concerned about the needle stick itself. The needle is quite small. You may feel a little bit of pressure. When the medication is then injected in, a lot of times that's when any discomfort is uh, perceived, but it's very short-lived and lasting only a few seconds. The shoulder, also a very common uh, joint that is injected. Most commonly, we don't inject directly into the joint we can for arthritis, but majority of the time the conditions are more for what we call bursitis or impingement. That is in the location above the shoulder joint, which is a ball and saucer type joint, which is directly below my finger here but the space above that, below the bone here, which is an extension of our shoulder blade, uh, is a bursa, that is a fluid-filled sac that can get inflamed and irritated, particularly when you move the shoulder in certain positions. That is the target. Coming from the back of the shoulder, below the bone, we usually use ultrasound to help guide us. The needle will come in and into this space here, below the bone, where the bursa is located and is that, that's the location in which the medication is injected. Often, this can cause a slight reproduction of the individual symptoms lasting a matter of a second or two. That's typically a positive sign. And then the needle is withdrawn and a sterile bandage is placed. Commonly, people wanna know what conditions does cortisone effectively treat and am I a candidate for this injection? That's a specific question you would have for your physician. But the most common conditions are arthritis, bursitis, and even tendonitis. Now the arm and the leg have differing factors as we of course walk on our legs and many of the tendonitis of the lower extremity want to avoid cortisone injections because there unfortunately is the risk of rupture. But in our upper extremity or arm, this can be very effective treatment. Other conditions, include bursitis of the shoulder, commonly also referred to as impingement, which you may have heard of. Um, and this is a common condition that afflicts the shoulder when you're reaching overhead or even reaching behind. Commonly, it causes nighttime discomfort as well. Arthritis soreness, 
can be very effectively treated with the cortisone as the arthritis and the breakdown of the joint results in inflammation of the joint lining and the cortisone itself being delivered to the joint effectively reduces this inflammation. Commonly with arthritic conditions, we want to do the injections no more than every three months, but other conditions warrant more frequent injections. Again, it'll depend on your response to treatment. Commonly, patients want to know how long will it last? And when will it provide benefit? When will it take away my pain? Well, on average, cortisone will take about two or three days for maximum benefit. However, it can take upwards of a week in certain conditions, and I ask my patients to be patient. Also, in many of these injections, we also inject a local anesthetic, similar to Novocaine. This may or may not dull or even eliminate your pain for a brief period of time. Unfortunately, this medication only lasts a few hours, so there may be a window where your condition may reoccur, and in some cases it can even intensify just for a night or two before the cortisone kicks in. Commonly, people wanna know how long will it last? Unfortunately, we don't know until we try this treatment. The response can be quite variable. Some individuals will receive significant benefit and even potentially long-term benefit. Other individuals may receive very little or no benefit from the corticosteroid. But this also varies among the different conditions and the severity of your condition. We can repeat the injection in the future. In some cases, it's three months. In some cases, it can be six weeks. Commonly for arthritic conditions or any in injection that's delivered directly into the joint in my practice, I like to wait every three week, every three months before repeating the injection. Whereas bursitis or even tendonitis, we can consider repeating the injection as soon as six weeks after the first injection. Your repeat injection will largely depend on your response. Also, individuals want to know, what if this injection doesn't work? Well, that's when we will have a lengthy discussion regarding your condition. There are numerous other options of which we can explore to treat your pain. There are other injection type treatments, and there are other conservative measures. Sometimes an injection, it can be performed first to determine whether surgery is necessary, or if other treatments may be the next approach. Commonly patients want to know, is this safe? What if I'm on blood thinners? What if I'm a diabetic? I take numerous medications, doctor. Will it interact with my other medications? All valid questions. Corticosteroid injections are very safe to perform. Diabetics, we do advise you to watch your blood sugar for the next two or three days. It can result in elevation of your blood sugar on an average of three, maybe four days after that. Commonly, we're only seeing a very small rise in the blood sugar. If you have any concerns, that's when we would advise you to call your family physician because you may need to have your diabetic medications adjusted. Any effects we see from the cortisone are very temporary and are not significant. Therefore, it is very safe for diabetics. Many patients are on blood thinners and they're concerned about having a needle into their skin resulting in bleeding. The needle itself is very small. We see very little repercussions of a cortisone injection. Commonly, there can be some bruising at the injection site, but for the most part, these are largely safe, even on individuals who are taking stronger blood thinners, such as Coumadin. And people who are on numerous medications, we have not seen drug interactions. A big concern is having any kind of adverse reaction, whether it is a drug interaction or just the cortisone it's itself. Cortisone has proven to be very, very benign. And in many cases, cortisone is the treatment for interactions as it also not only reduces inflammation, it seems to reduce the effect of our body's natural uh, immune response, such as allergy. Patients wanna know, does the injection hurt? Well, honestly, it is an injection, but we do what we can to minimize any discomfort you may receive during the procedure. After the skin is 
prepped with alcohol or even betadine. We do use a cold spray, which helps to anesthetize the skin before introduction of the needle. The needle itself is very small. If we have to use a larger needle, such as when we're withdrawing fluid simultaneously, we will use a little numbing medicine at the skin to help reduce any discomfort that a larger needle may produce. But for the most part, we don't do that because it would involve getting two shots, which of course nobody would like to get. However, if you're just receiving the cortisone injection, the needle we use is quite small and often the puncture is not the portion of the injection that causes the most discomfort. Once the needle is in place and we confirm that, then we begin to inject the medication. It is during the injection process where you may feel some discomfort as it is pressurizing the area that is inflamed. That in itself can be a good sign. It indicates that the medication is being delivered directly to your source of pain. And it usually only lasts for a matter of a few seconds because part of what we inject will be numbing medicine, which will interact very quickly to reduce any discomfort that the injection may give. It's not unusual to have soreness in the injection site for the next day or two. Therefore, we recommend that you apply ice to the injection site two or three times a day for the next two or three days on about 20 or 30 minutes at a time. If you feel you need to ice the area more, by all means, you may apply ice more frequently. Anti-inflammatories, if they are indicated, can also be taken as well as Tylenol to reduce any discomfort that the injection may cause. Also, individuals want to know, when can I get back to my normal activity? Are there any restrictions after having a cortisone injection? We advise that after the injection, you try to do your best to rest the area for a good 48 hours. Returning to work or your normal light activity, there's no problem doing so. More aggressive activities such as sports, we would advise you at least try to take a few days off and during that time apply ice to the area of the injection. With regards to physical therapy, I advise my patients to take two days off if you can to allow the injection, more importantly, to take maximum benefit. You'll get at more out of therapy doing so. I also like to review some of the theories and misconceptions about cortisone. Some individuals have even inquired about the negative effects of cortisone. The cortisone itself being an injection is delivered directly to the site. We do not see the common side effects of oral steroids, such as increased appetite or weight gain from injections, as the medication itself stays within the area in which is injected. Again, diabetics can see a bump in their blood sugar, but this is very temporary and may, may last only a few days. Overall, we try to avoid doing cortisone as frequently as possible because we're not, we are concerned about the repeated introduction of cortisone in the joint environment. There are studies to suggest that it can increase the rate in which arthritis progresses, but we feel that the benefits of the cortisone are worth any potential acceleration of the arthritic process. When it comes to treating certain conditions such as the rotator cuff, we do know that the cortisone can be detrimental if it is frequently introduced to the rotator cuff environment. Individuals who have tears, the cortisone may provide temporary relief in their pain. However, there is concern that the cortisone can be detrimental to the tendon and can affect healing of the tendon after surgery. It can even potentially increase the risk of infection from surgery. Therefore, depending on the condition in which you're being treated, we would wait a certain amount of time after receiving a cortisone injection before considering surgical intervention.